Okay, my name is Manuela Moreira Gonzalez. I usually use my maiden names because a lot of people know me by my maiden name. Okay, I came to Canada in 1966. I was five years old and I've been living here ever since. I go back to Portugal and visit. Um, when I was younger, every three years. When I got married, I brought my kids every three years. And now, at my age, I'm 58, going to be 59. I'm going every year, twice a year now. Nice. So I have two children, my, my daughter Annabelle, my son Samuel, and I've got three grandkids, Haley, Mateus, and uh, Theodore. Oh, there's no words to say how it feels to be a grandmother. You love your kids, but your grandkids, that love is completely different. You're... You just want to see them all the time. You know, you want to play with them. You want to be with them. The love is just, it's hard to explain. Really hard to explain. But it's the joy that they bring to you that uh, makes it really special. My daughter is living in the United States. She married an Air Force man. Um, and so they live in Nebraska, Omaha. There's nothing there, <laughs> pretty much. It's just fields of hay or wheat <clears throat> and my son lives here in Ottawa and has uh, his first son my grandson Theodore he's six months in Portugal? I have my mom and dad in Portugal they lived in Canada for 30 years and then they decided to move back when they ended up retiring and they've been there ever since uh, they come here on holidays now and they like it the weather there is better and uh, my mother is able to do all her gardening but she likes and she likes it there to move back permanently I don't know if I would um, I haven't tried like when I'm there for two months I'm itchy to come back to Canada but um, but I might have to if one of my parents happens to pass away my father probably will want to come back but my mother would so it all depends who goes first right but um, I don't know if I'll ever live there completely, like the whole year. I don't know. I can't say I would or won't because when I'm here, I miss it there. When I'm there, I miss it here. When you're there, like you've been there for a few weeks to a month, you're fine because you're on holidays. But then when it goes further than the month, then you start being, you start getting itchy to come here because I think it's like any immigrant. You're never comfortable in one place because you want to keep on moving. There's so much you can take about having a holiday and not doing anything. You know, you, there's so much you can take of lying down on a beach. There's so much you can take of, you know, laying down on a couch. So I think that's probably what it is. But, um, yeah, I'm there and I start getting itching to come back. And then I'm here and I'm here for a few months and I want to go there. I don't know how to to explain it, but... It's two different worlds also. Here I find that the lifestyle is comfortable. Uh, you have everything you want at the tip of your fingers or phone call away. And, um, but then you don't have is the weather or the lifestyle that they have there. Um, there, the only thing that I'm lacking there, I believe, is you want something, you have to wait and wait to get it. Or who you know will get it for you, you know? Here, no, you know, internet, phone call, you have what you need, exactly. there, no. I teach folk dance uh, from originally from where I'm from, from the northern part of Portugal. And um, I teach for anybody that wants to learn. Most of the children that, are, that we teach are ages from five till about 16, 17. And they're from every part of Portugal and even the islands, uh, even Africa, you know, um, they know the culture, so they automatically want to learn the dance. Uh, but we've had Canadians come in, and they've picked it up. So it's any culture that really actually enjoy to dance. And, uh, and I enjoy it also to teach because I've danced the folk dance since I was a little girl. My mom and dad did the same. So... Uh, when I started the folk dancing was because when I came to Canada, my mother's brothers were in the folk dance. And since my parents were already in the folk dance back home, they also got involved. 
Then uh, when I got married, had my kids, I completely got out of the folk dance. Then I was, I came back to the folk dance um, to actually teach was because we had a priest from Africa that wanted to try to get the younger parents back into the community. So they asked, uh, they asked me and my, and they asked my husband and I if we would do something to bring back the, the youth and to bring back the younger families. So we thought of um, soccer and we thought of folk dance. So my husband ended up uh, getting a bunch of friends and they ended up getting a soccer team together. And I ended up getting a bunch of parents and we get the folklore. So, uh, and it's, it's still happening. Wow, as soon great. as they hit about 17, 18, then, oh, you know, they're working, they don't have time for it. But the beauty of it is when there's actually a, a party or a dinner and they'll put the folk music to dance. Now they just don't dance with their parents, not know what they're doing. They actually teach their parents <laughs> how it's done, which is beautiful. Um, yeah. I have there, it's myself. My, my son and there's also a cousin of mine, Gorette. And between the three of us, we're always, one of us is always there to teach. Um, so my son, because of his work, sometimes he's there, sometimes he's not. But I know the kids love when he's there, simply because he really pushes them to dance and, uh, and they like it. So I don't, I'm more laid back. <laughs> Okay, like the younger kids, the small kids, they love when I teach them because I don't over push them. My dress is completely black, mm -hmm. okay, simply and with all the gold because it, it uh, um, resembles the, the richer part of the, the, the culture. So the people that are richer, okay. Then you have uh, other costumes you have where they're your, uh, like the red ones that the girls wear. It's the, par the costume that represents as if they're going to a party, okay? <clears throat> then they have other costumes which are very simple, made out of linen, which shows where those are the people that are, work the land. So each color is pretty much a different um, trade kind of thing. And uh, they, it was their costumes that years and years ago, that's what they used to wear when they would go to a festival and, uh, and party pretty much it no you have to buy everything from Portugal even the instruments we personally don't have the instruments because uh, we can't find anybody in in here in Ottawa that actually know how to play them but if you go to Montreal or Toronto there's a lot of them and my son plays the uh, the concertina which is a, a mixture between uh, um, uh, accordion and another higher pitch uh, like like the um, Scottish uh, play the uh, there's a it's, a concert, it's called a concertina. Even the Germans also play it. Uh, it's a higher pitch than the accordion. And, um, but he doesn't like to play alone. He like, you know, and so, um, so we lack that here. And, uh, but uh, everything, all the instruments, most of them all come from back home. Use. The only thing that's different between the Canadians compared to the Portuguese um, is that as Portuguese, we have a tendency of taking care of our parents until they pretty much pass away. It's really hard for us to put them in a home 